Coming up, we hit the pavement to take a deeper look into the construction on Dave Lyle Boulevard. And find out how the Democratic Forum impacted your commute. Football City, USA is your hometown. Next on Winter Close Up. Welcome to Winter of Close Up. My name is Reese Murray. And I'm Matthew Cray. Dave Lyle Boulevard is a hotspot for Rock Hill commerce, but much of 2015 has been spent on construction in the area. Reporter William Richard tells us how the central issue and how it is being resolved. I'm here at the exit ramp off I-77, where interstate traffic merges with Dave Lyle Boulevard. Traffic has been an issue here for years, but recent construction has helped solve the situation. Um, the city of Rock Hill and the department noticed around the holiday season that there was a tremendous amount of traffic coming off the interstate ramp southbound, trying to make a left-hand turn on the Target and Best Buy, and we were having issues with. So this project was developed to try to take care of that traffic weave there by making traffic go to the traffic signal, turn right to get behind the median to approach that double left turn to Best Buy and Target. The project's original goal was to help with the flow of traffic, but driver safety was also in the mind of county officials. The, the main target is in fact efficiency, but we also want to focus on traveler safety. You may not get the level of cooperation from other drivers that you need, uh, and so that creates challenges. And so we're looking for both efficiency uh, and, and driver safety. Though equipment and materials still remain, drivers seem happy with the changes thus far. Well, I'm actually happy with the progress that they've made so far with Dave Lau. Um, you know, it's definitely made travel a whole lot safer and quicker. And uh, with the new lights installed, I feel like things are going to be great in the future. Um, I'm definitely glad that the officials have made progress and decided to take a step in making the road safer for us. The final stages of construction are almost complete, but York County officials expect a population growth over the next 10 years. Future projects could include a sky bridge connecting Winthrop University to the Dave Lyle Corridor and potentially the extension of Dave Lyle to the panhandle of Lancaster County. I'm William Richard, Winthrop Close Up. With the construction on the intersection nearly complete, county officials said a new sidewalk project may be in the works to help with safety and travel of the pedestrian traffic. With U.S. students' math and reading scores showing significant declines on national tests in high schools for the first time in more than two decades, advocates on all sides have begun pointing fingers. Reporter Janae Reese asked educators on the new state initiative. Classrooms like these are where students may or may not learn about math, reading, or science common core standards. This initiative was developed by governors and state education department heads. The goal was to develop a set of standards to make students ready for college and careers. Now, 43 states have adopted these standards. I was first introduced to Common Core um, and knowing what was going on my freshman year at Winthrop University because um, everything we do as education majors, we implement Common Core into it. Our lesson plans, our assessments, everything um, is very backed up by Common Core. I am standing in front of one of 618 elementary schools here in the state of South Carolina. Rock Hill, along with other cities and counties, chose not to adopt the state initiative Common Core. We know that if you have like 2 minus 9, you have to borrow from the tens place, but that's just something we've memorized. But Common Core makes you understand why you have to do that. So it is more time consuming teaching but it helps our students like understand it more thoroughly. It's just implemented at the wrong time. Uh, well, not necessarily at the wrong time, but I think it's implemented for certain groups at the wrong time. So, Until state legislators take another look at the standards once more, South Carolina could possibly be behind in education. This has been Janae Reese with the Close Up. For more information on the future of Common Core, visit ed.sc.gov, the official website for South Carolina's Department of Education. The Democratic Forum is in town, and that will cause a lot of headaches for people who park on campus. With Winthrop Memorial Circle to, and Winthrop Memorial Circle to Oakland Avenue and Eden Terrace to Sumter Avenue were closed starting Tuesday in order to accommodate the large number of media and political figures who are on campus. Alumni Drive will remain open to traffic. 
Winthrop will be shuttling candidates and media members from the Coliseum to campus starting Thursday to further prevent delays. Look for our coverage of the forum next week here on Winthrop Close Up. Coming up, we will have Emily Gill with more Winthrop Close Up. Also, stay tuned to see the ghost of Tillman come to life. Coming up on Winthrop Close Up, find out how Winthrop Soccer is celebrating Coach Pasapanko's final home game as an Eagle. Welcome back to Winthrop Close Up. Winthrop Soccer is ending its regular season, and Jacob Alex tells us all about the action from their last home game of the regular season. It's a big day here at Winthrop. Not only is it Senior Day and Halloween, but it's also Coach Pasapanko's final regular season home game as Winthrop's head coach. He's been the head coach here for 27 years, and uh, the, the atmosphere is just great here. They're even handing out little cardboard cutouts of his head at the door. Before the game started, graduating seniors on the team were recognized for their commitment over the last four years. For C.J. Miller, his senior day was unforgettable. So it was a great experience, especially since this gap for his last season. It was good to get the W for him. And now we're pushing forward to the playoffs and hoping we can get a home scene with that. So senior night was unbelievable. Mm -hmm. The Eagles won four goals to one. It was a success attributed to head coach Rich Pasapanko. You know, I hired Rich to come here back in 1989, and um, of course it's been a good run for us here at Winthrop, and he's done a great job for the program and really elevated it to another level. And Before the game, Pasapenko was honored by current and former players gathered to celebrate his 27-year tenure as head coach. You know, you see 40 years pass in front of you, that's the main thing, you know, and then having all the guys here was great. With the regular season in the books, the Eagles are now turning to the postseason, looking to put Pasapanko in the NCAA tournament one last time before he retires. Jacob Halix, Winthrop Close Up. We at Winthrop Close Up would like to thank Coach Pasapanko for his many years of coaching at Winthrop and wish him a happy retirement. Football is a truly American game and holds a particular power in the South. Rock Hill, especially, is known statewide as Football City, USA. I took a look to show us why. Football is a truly American game and holds a particular power in the South. It's always been like that. It's, it's, when I was a kid, we always loved football around here. It's been a, a staple of the Rock Hill community. Not long ago, a journalist dubbed Rock Hill Football City USA. All the teams in the county continue to prove that this city truly has earned that title. There's a huge, um, just a, a expectation that people have of, of all the schools in Rock Hill and so yeah I, I think that our kids they, they feed off of that they, they know what's expected of them and, and it probably drives them a little more. Although there is pressure on the team they feel the pride of their fellow students. After the game we all get together the football team comes and cheerleaders get together and we sing our album motto together it's like a big family. I'll see you under the Friday Night Lights. Several of the Rock Hill football teams are expected to go into the state playoffs this year. Stay with us. There's much more still ahead on Winthrop Close Up. Chief Zebedis and Rock Hill PD answer some questions about police. Coming up, see how one Winthrop organization raised money by scaring people. Welcome back to Winthrop Close Up. With school shootings and police brutality around the U.S., Winthrop's NAACP, ABJ, and Multicultural Student Council invited Rock Hill and Winthrop's Police Chief Zebedis to talk to students and answer their questions. All over the news, you see protests and questions that people have towards the police. NAACP wanted students to have the chance to have some of their questions answered. The whole purpose of it is exactly what it sounds like. It's about everyone, black, white, whatever, stopping and thinking about the things that we see and how to go about interacting with law enforcement. Rock Hill PD and Chief Zepidus answered questions about the police force. Questions such as, what should you do when you get pulled over and what if you're in a sketchy area? Chief Zepidus says that these forums are good for the community. I, I think the forums are good. I, I think it's always good when we can get out into the community, answer questions, 
educate the community on what we do, what our relationships are with the community, how we can build the relationship with the community. So, Students had many questions to ask. One student says the forum was very informational. I think it was a very good forum and very good program because it shed light on what actually is considered police brutality as well as saying that it's not the training that they go through because everybody, each police department goes through different training, so it's not the training that they go through that causes it. It's just maybe they might be in a bad mood that day or something. Chief Zepidus and Rock Hill PD both have a ride-along program and says that it is the best way to really know what is going on with your local police. This is Jessica Sampson, Winthrop Close-Up. For more information about those ride-alongs, visit www.winthrop.edu slash campus police and www.cityofrockhill.com slash department slash police. This fall, the Winthrop Student Alumni Council raised money by making people scream. Michaela Dunbar has more. Well, in the ghost tours, we met different ghosts all around Tillman, and we learned ghost stories about why they're here and the background behind them. And it actually was scary. They like were very informational and jumped out and told us all the stories and everything. So it was a lot of fun. Every two years, the Student Alumni Council sponsors Tillman Ghost Tours as a fundraiser. Hello, I'm Dr. Thomas A. Crawford. We like to keep the students and the community of Rock Hill involved with Winthrop, so we put on this event to get everyone to come together as a family to celebrate Halloween. This fall when the moon comes out, so will the ghosts. SAC is hosting a fundraiser where participants will pay $5 to see reenactments of ghosts that are infamous for haunting Tillman to this day. Actors posed as famous Winthrop ghosts brought their stories to life. Are you here to free me? <laughs> oh yes, Ben Tillman scared me. <laughs> People on the tour get to see the fourth floor of Tillman, which is closed to the public during the year. This has been Michaela Dunbar, Winthrop Close-Up. The money raised from the fundraiser will support the Winthrop Fund. I went on my first ghost tour in Savannah, Georgia not too long ago, but I didn't see any ghosts. Savannah, Georgia. Isn't that where Forrest Gump was? Yes, it was. I bet if, I bet if you stopped and listened real close, you could have heard, run, Reese, run. <laughs> and I would have took off running. Did you hear that? <laughs> well, that's all we have time for today. If you want to stay up to date on campus news, you can follow us on Twitter and Facebook at Winthrop Close Up.